justice for Dante Wright. Dante Wright Life Matter. Before I give the plea for justice, let me have you join me in proclaiming that Dante Wright Life Matter. So his mother, Katie and Aubrey Wright, will know that we believe it when we quote it. Up on your feet, if you would. Dante Wright Life Matter. 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 Katie, Aubrey. Our heart is broken with yours as we come to lay him to rest. But most importantly, we celebrate his life and we define his legacy. Once more, Dante Wright Life Matter. Thank you. Now, Reverend Al is going to deliver the eulogy as only my mentor can. But I want to acknowledge for you in this plea for justice along with my distinguished co-counsels, attorney Antonio Ramanucci and attorney Jeff Starnes and attorney Carol Powell Lexing. We want to acknowledge the fact that as we make the plea for justice in the court of public opinion, that we pray Attorney General Keith Ellison will allow us to get full justice in the court of law. Yes, Attorney General Keith Ellison. And maybe that's appropriate, Reverend Drum, right before I make this plea. Attorney General Keith Ellison worked in tandem with our civil rights legal team, the activists, and the, I mean, yeah, the activists. We have to acknowledge the role that the activists play, the freedom fighters on the front line. Because as Dr. King said, we all have a role to play in this struggle for equality and justice. Rail played his role, the activists play their role, based on the Constitution of the Seventh Amendment, the civil rights lawyers play their role, and my God, based on the Tenth Amendment, Attorney General Keith Ellison and his team of prosecutors played their role to get criminal culpability for the death of George Perry Floyd, whose family is present here. If you understand, George Floyd's family. Step out front for a second. George Floyd's family, step out front for a second. Just for a second. Minneapolis, thank you for not letting the legacy of George Floyd end with that video we saw taken by Darnella on May 25th, 2020. The governor wants to end it with a precedent that we all can follow that 
more than the lives of minorities, and especially black people, have a right to get full justice, not just partial justice. And the last thing I will say about this Floyd family, aside from Reverend Al and National Action Network, they have become the comforters and counselors, along with our legal team, for the family of Dante Wright. You see, Barbara Allen is so profound that just this time last year, Mayor Fry, just this time last year, Reverend, you remember this time last year, they were being introduced to the world because they became part of a fraternity that no family wants to be a part of. Congresswoman Omar, they evolved right before our eyes. And now they have not considered robbery to walk hand in hand with the family of Dante Wright until they can get a measure of justice. So we salute you, George Floyd, and the legacy of George Floyd, as we stand together to make sure that President Biden knows we are all going to walk together to get the George Floyd Justice and Police and Accountability Act made into law that will live forever for our children and our children's children and children yet unborn. Thank you, George Floyd. Thank you, George Floyd's family. God bless you all. And sometimes your heart gets to you. They don't mean to be this long. That young man who played the trumpet presentation for you all is the Grammy Award winning jazz artist Keon Harold. <laughs> Keon, please stand. Just, just come here for a second, Keon. Because of making the plea for justice, you know, the one thing that the legacy of Dante Wright would stand for is this proposition that on that video, we did not see the police officer de-escalate. And de-escalation is a behavior that is intended to prevent the escalation of conflicts. So, Katie and Aubrey, what we saw on the video of Officer Powder, this 26-year veteran, was not an exercise in de-escalation. I will submit to you, my co-counsels, that it was an exercise in escalation. But if you want to see an exercise in de-escalation, I have the honor of representing this man who most of you came to know because his 14-year-old son was falsely accused by a white woman of stealing an iPhone in the Arlo Hotel after the Christmas holiday. And this black man, Tamika, this black man my side showed the world how you de-escalate a situation. That is who Keon Harold is. A strong black father willing to protect his child, not with physical assault and battery, but with intellect and diplomacy. That's what Dante Wright needed. That's what Officer Potter should have exhibited. She should have been like Keon Harold. So I say to you, as we acknowledge the families of Emmett Till, 
who are present here with us. And the family of Oscar Grant. And they will stand because such similarities. You remember Oscar's case, the police officer said they were reaching for a taser. 12 years ago, I think about George Floyd tragedy and I read Riverdale, they said, what is the difference 30 years later between Rodney King that we saw on video get brutalized and dehumanized and tortured by the police and George Floyd who we saw on video get brutalized and dehumanized and tortured by the police? And the answer was very quite simple. It was the quality of technology has gotten better. But the excessive use of force remained the same. When you think about de-escalation, it's based on behavior. It's based on your behavior. Your behavior of a situation many times is based on your perspective. How you see a thing. I'm reminded Senator Kobe Shard of Ava DuVernay's How They See Us. The legacy in the court of jurisprudence will be how did Officer Potter see Dante Wright? But more importantly, how does America see our children. Because if she saw your child, Katie, like she saw her child, then I do not think she would have even reach for a taser, much less a gun. Because when they see their children, they see their future. They see the best and the brightest that they have to give the world for the future. They see the most talented and resourceful, most indomitable human beings when they see their children. I submit to you, America, so do we when we see our children. I have been notified that Philando Castile's mother is present here. Let's please acknowledge her. Brianna Taylor's boyfriend, Kenny Walker, is present here with us. Let's recognize Kenny Walker. All of those who are attached to people who we loved that 
the people who were supposed to protect and serve them could not see their humanity, our children. So I'll say in conclusion in this plea for justice, I remind you again, as I did yesterday, of what Dr. King told us. Because at some point, Dante Jr. is going to get old enough to watch that video of how his father was slain so unnecessarily. A misdemeanor. A misdemeanor. Reverend Allen, it's too often that traffic stops end up as deadly sentences, a death sentence. We're going to have to make sure that Dante Jr. know that we stood up for Dante, his father. And it is so clear to me that we can't worry about what people say about us as we stand up for our children. Dr. King said that the coward will ask the question, is it safe? Then he said expediency will ask the question, is it politically correct? Then he said, vanity would come along Bishop Howell and ask the question, is it popular? And then he said, conscience will come along and ask the question, is it right? And Dr. King concluded, there comes a time when one must take a position that is neither popular nor politically correct or not even safe. But there comes a time when one must take a position because your conscience tells you it is the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do to stand up for our children. It is the right thing to do to speak up for our children. It is the right thing to do to fight for our children. Because if we don't fight for our children, we can't expect nobody else to fight for our children like that. And we have to fight for our children and to hell freezes out. And then we have to be prepared to fight on the ice. Because our children need to know that's how much we believe in them. That's how much we believe in their future. Because they too have a right to life and liberty in the American dream. And that is the plea for justice. Thank you. God bless you.
3.30 in the morning, so nervous and scared about what I was going to stand up here and say.
through thick and thin, through all the late night conversations we had about him trying to better himself as a man and the man he wanted to be for junior, we talked for hours on it. He was doing that and I was just, I'm, I was so proud of the man that he was becoming. And he was gonna make an amazing father to junior once junior got older throughout the years. And I love my little brother to death. You all give a big round of applause for this beautiful American family. Nice, you said everybody talked about that big smile he had. That big smile. And how he lighted up the room. Next, you will hear from his uncle, Bobby Wright, the uncle of Dante Wright. I love you, Dante, and we will see you again. 